Hello, everyone, and welcome to another expert interview. And today I have a really, I think, actionable and important interview for anyone who enjoys going to fitness classes or working out with a group, a group instructor, or even just working out online with videos. I have a fitness pro, Ms. Emma Fullwood, who I met in person. I met her in Brighton, England at the Woman on Fire Conference, which is an amazing health and fitness expo put on by Burl, Burl Education. And I, I just was really impressed by her. I've, I've connected on social media and that kind of thing, but we just, we really enjoy connecting in person. We have a lot of the same ways of thinking and it, her business is called Supercharged Club. It's superchargedclub.co.uk and I'll put her information in the video notes. But I want Emma to today to tell us a little bit about what she does as a fitness professional in the industry, 23 years in the fitness industry, more than four years working just with women prenatal and postpartum, what she does, what she's doing right to help keep her clients safe. Emma, I'd like you to go ahead and say hi, introduce yourself, and uh, maybe just tell people a brief little bit about your background and why you became interested in this. Okay, I'll keep it brief. Um, can't believe I've been in the fitness industry that long. Shock. Um, basically, I had my little boy with a fitness instructor before I had him and thought I was going to bounce back. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? My body was just going to bounce back. I was just going to lose the body weight because that's important to me. Um, and it just didn't happen. Um, many reasons. Um, one, I didn't realize how hard bringing a child up was <laughs> um, with very little help around um, and how exhausting it was and two I knew nothing about um, the postpartum postnatal body um, I wasn't told anything about it in my fitness training um, and really that's quite shocking when you think of my fitness background I taught moms myself in the past um, and I I was doing things wrong um, now I know but I didn't obviously I wasn't educated at the time so things start I started to notice that my body wasn't going to spring back when um, I was doing loads of sit-ups loads of planks loads of boot camp loads of online fitness um, training from people that were looked amazing on Instagram and stuff and it just wasn't working um, I also started to take a few of my friends down the park and we'd park the prams and we'd get going with jumping jacks and burpees and that. And, and one of my friends actually wet herself while we were doing that. Um, and I thought, oh, that's a bit strange, but thought nothing of it. You know, it's not my problem. Um, and then it happened to me. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I wet myself, and, and things were just not right. They say it often takes something to happen to us. Most of us who are in this industry teach because it's happened to us ourselves or something similar. Yeah, like your own prolapse story. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, I love that. But yeah, so um, then I realised I did some research and found an instructor in Brighton, which is a postnatal instructor that told me I had tummy separation. Um, and basically, all I my kind of like I, I was really upset with my body. Um, you know, I had this tummy separation, I was leaking, I didn't look how I wanted to look. This person that was meant to bounce back because she was part of the fitness industry was falling apart. Um, and also doing the exercises, the postnatal um, diastasis coming together exercises and the pelvic floor exercises, I found terribly boring. Um, and I thought there's got to be something else out there other than doing these exercises. And that's when I kind of researched, found yourself, found Burrell Education, found the Mutu system and um, Julie Weeb and also Brianna Battles, who, who I think is the main person that's made me realise that women, even if they've got issues, still want to be able to exercise. Um, so... I kind of then, at first, I started just, um, I, I, I um, did a Pilates course and I started teaching moms um, diastasis, which is lying on your back, lifting legs up, you know, um, traditional kind of Kegels and all that kind of stuff. 
I thought there's got to be something else. These women want to do, like me, we want to do something else. What else is there? And yeah, and that's when I got researching and have put supercharged stuff together um, and where it is now, really. That's wonderful. Yeah, that sounds similar to my journey. I was, you know, I am a physical therapist and not only did I find the exercises that I had to give my clients in the confines of my little cubicle physical therapy clinic boring, I was just like, they're not going to do them if they're not having fun. And so that's really why I came up with Fem Fusion Fitness was the exercises have always been really focused on the pelvic floor and core, even though they're not outright like yeah. boring core stability, like Kegel, like that's always integrated, but it's kind of integrated. It like I, we get in through the back door, we get them yeah. having fun, but they're working the right muscles and doing the breathing and all of that at the same time. So they're not even realizing that it's a therapeutic exercise. Uh, yeah, one and um, one thing that happened with me is I took a um, uh, Pilates course, Stop Pilates, and nobody picked up um, during that whole seven months of training that actually I wasn't breathing right. Mm -hmm. So I even passed my postnatal, uh, my postnatal Pilates exam and Stop Pilates exam and everything else. Nobody picked when I wasn't breathing right myself, and it was only actually when I saw your videos and Julie Weeb as well, that I was like, I'm not doing it right, and I'm a trained professional. Yeah. So, but I think if I go out there with classes, such names such as Learn to Breathe postnatally, I'm not gonna have anybody come into that class. <laughs> you know, everyone thinks, I know how to breathe. <laughs> you know, who's gonna learn how to breathe? So yeah, exactly, I go in kind of with a different when, approach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's wonderful. And that breathing is the link that so many people, they say, oh, it's like the light bulb moment and they can finally feel that core connection. So I love yeah. that. Um, yeah. I want to specifically ask you about some screening. We kind of had a, con a conversation about some kind of screening essentials. And I have a little a list of things that, that I think of, but I'd like to ask you first to share. I'm sure you're going to cover what I was going to say. But kind of screening essentials that you think are important for you to do with your clients and that ultimately, you know, all fitness instructors should do, we think, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the first time I meet um, a woman, I've, I've normally actually, a, a woman, a lady, a mom, um, I've um, already had um, email conversations to and fro and actually got, got a rough idea of where we are. So when she had her baby, what her delivery was, um, forceps, C-section, how long she was pushing for beforehand, what her periods are like now. So um, I think that's a massive um, question that originally I did let get it missed. But there's so many painful periods and heavy periods um, with, with moms coming to me. So also mention periods. So, so I've kind of got a background. Um, and then when I see them in person, I get them actually moving first. Um, I used to get them standing there um, or almost with the plumb line kind of thing and getting them to breathe first. And, you know, these moms aren't feeling great about their body anyway. And I found that that wasn't the right way to do it. So I kept them moving. I say, well, take a seat. And then I say, oh, would you just mind moving onto that seat over there? Just to see how actually they get up and oh, they move and yeah. sit down. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the posture mm -hmm. thing. Because if anybody stands in front of you, everybody tries to stand with good posture. But if you tell somebody to take a seat, they generally start going into their normal. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then another thing I get them to do is to, I just say, oh, pop, pop on the floor for me, on your knees. Um, and and um, we have a little bit of a chat. And then I say, oh, you just stand up now. And I really want to see how they get from the floor to standing. It seems like a really simple um, task that they do daily. But most moms put all their weight, their hand goes on their knee. And they kind of like, I'm not sure if I'm in shock now, their hand goes on their knee, they bend like this, and they kind of go, <laughs> and I'm like, how old are you? And they're like, 35, whatever, 14. I'm like, and that's how you get up from standing. And then 
I kind of like, you know, these ladies have actually come to me and they normally go, oh, I do a bit of running and I do a bit of CrossFit. That's kind of like the in thing at the moment and, and that kind of stuff. But they can't get up from standing, yet alone getting up from standing, holding a baby, or often they come to me with five-year-old children. So I kind of know then that actually what may be causing these symptoms that they've got is their everyday life. And that's often what we need to address first. So then I go into the breathing, um, because I'm really shocked them with that, because they haven't even thought about how they get up. Do you know what I mean? They might do Pilates, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, I actually have something to briefly say about that. I'm not sure if the interview I'm going to reference is going to post before or after yours, but I just interviewed Susan Clinton. She's a physical therapist and she's all about the breath as well. You're going to love this okay. interview, Emma. Um, but she has people also sit to stand oh. and do similar things, but she notices whether they're breath holding and doing that like exactly. a But what she does is she asks them to talk while they're doing it. She says, hey, can you just, she'll ask them a question and say, hey, while while you're answering me, go ahead and stand up. And she says, most people will hold their breath as they they won't be able to talk while they're transitioning. And that really shows her that they're, because talking is the same as exhaling. And we all know that we want to exhale on exertion. And so they're not doing that. They're holding their breath and yeah. Pressure systems, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so after we've kind of done that, just so that they feel like they're getting a little bit of movement, otherwise they feel their first session is just standing there or, or, or not really doing anything. Then we, I talk about the breath and I teach them about the diaphragm. And quite often I've actually sent them Julie Weeb's videos via email to watch nice. before we meet. Not loads, just a couple. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say, did you watch the videos? Yes, yes, yes. We go to do the breath and it's, I call it back to front breathing. It's, it's, it's not back to front breathing, but it's, it's the wrong way around. It's an inhale and pull up and an exhale they seem to be letting go. It's all in their shoulders. So, you, you know, we do a lot on the breath, but obviously it takes time to get the breath. So we try and focus on the breath, but that's their homework as well. You know, their first week homework or two week homework is really on on the breath and then we talk about posture and opening up chest and just how the body works and it's stuff that they have never heard in the whole of their life they you know and and actually they go well is this a new type of breathing and I'm like well no this is you know if they've got a new new baby if the baby's with them I'll say look at how your baby is breathing this is how we breathe and then, yes, we practice the breath using the breath system and we, we actually get lifting often on the, first, um, on the first meeting because these ladies are going home and lifting five, six-year-old children. So it's quite funny when I show them a kettlebell and I say, right, at the end of the session, you're going to be lifting that. And it's got this kettlebell's got 20 kilograms on it. Yeah. And they're like, Ooh. And, you know, I kind of roughly know the weight of their, I've already worked it out roughly the weight of their child. And I'm like, actually, a car seat weighs two stone with a baby in it. Because we weighed it the other day. So you're carrying that and probably another one. So, yeah, so the screening is um, is finding out about their, their everyday daily activities as well. And how we can incorporate the breath in, in what they do. So it's, it's, you know, notice when you're tense. Um, another one is shouting at the kids. To make it a bit funny, um, and I say before you shout at the kids and you bellow down like, rrr, 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 try and actually have, a, uh, you know, to let go, have a deep breath and actually pull up when you're shouting. Because let's face it, we're all going to shout, put your shoes on. But <laughs> I do it now and I'm pulling up. And then as soon as the shout's gone, I let go. But it's the letting go at the moment that all my moms are struggling with. I love this. This is like a whole new way to do kegels. You do it while you're shouting. Oh, um, yeah. You've got to fit it in, right? You've got to fit it in. Oh, that's great. 
So I'm, I'm trying to think of, I, I mean, I screen, I mean, my questions that I send them are quite, are quite long, but you know. Well, my let me, I'll go ahead and pop in because, um, yeah. what, and that, that was amazing. That was fantastic. But my basics that I really wish that um, someday fitness instructors around the world would be doing with all of their female clients would be to check for diastasis recti. Oh, yes. Yeah. To ask yeah. the basics about bladder leakage, if they feel a feeling of pressure or heaviness, and then maybe even check for signs of excessive pelvic tension. Because, yes. of course, we don't. We need to be careful with those folks who have overly active pelvic floor muscles and make sure at least that we build enough rest time in after the session so that they can relax and release and like let go. Yeah. Yeah. I had over. Yeah. I had over. Yeah. Yeah. And and one of the things, yeah. And one of the things I asked my moms in the list isn't how is your pelvic floor? Yeah. Do you leap when you cough, sneeze, jump, push, lift, go on a trampoline? Do you know what I mean? So that, yeah. You know, because if you ask the general question, how is your pelvic floor? Most people will say, fine. Exactly. I think that's key that it's got to be functional and it's got to apply to the the client. So yeah. yeah, So if, if, if you happen to be a fitness instructor watching this, that's a great point. So when you're screening, you can help your client check for diastasis recti physically. You know, you can do the, the check of the midline. You can have them do a Kegel exercise, a pelvic floor squeeze and lift, and that should feel a tensioning in the, in the deep abdominal, uh, connected tissues as well. There's a connection there. So that's one way to check. Um, If it feels squishy, squishy, then that means we have a problem. Um, And then when you're asking about the bladder leakage, do what Emma said. Don't say, hey, do you, are you incontinent? Nobody's going (laughs) to, people aren't going to admit to that or even really understand. It's the, it's the specific, you know, do you leak when, or do you have to wear panty liner when you blah, 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 or whatever. Um, And then checking for signs of overtension, it would be things like, do you have, um, painful sex? Is it, is pain, is sex uncomfortable? Is, do you have a hard time? Um, you know, do you have feelings of pain or tension or pressure in the pelvic area that feels like you can't relax and let go? Um, can you think of anything else that people might gently ask on a form an intake form or something like that? I've never asked this on an intake form, but often people, um, just the way I am start opening up, um, and we have issues surrounding um, them having a C-section, emergency C-section when they wanted a natural birth. And actually, it can be creating a lot of emotion attached to their body, yes. um, quite stressful. So I don't mention that on a form, but I mean, it definitely comes up. And, and the other one with, with tightness, and um, I know you mentioned painful sex, but actually not being able to achieve an orgasm can be um, to do with not being able to relax let go yeah I'm not going to say that on YouTube about my experience with that (laughs) because my partner might watch (laughs) (laughs) well and I can hear people watching this right now and think yeah right my fitness instructor is going to ask this stuff or have me fill out a form in front of a gym of a thousand other ladies and I mean I, I understand that this is sort of pie in the sky ideal world However, I think that there's absolutely ways to, to do this in even a more public. I mean, your classes are dedicated to this type of thing. Women are coming to you expecting that they're going to maybe be asked some personal questions and stuff like yeah. that. But do you think there's a way for um, either, if, if somebody watching right now is a fitness trainer, for a more regular gym style fitness class trainer to help their participants or for a participant to sort of gently bring this up to their fitness trainer? Do you think there's a way to do it for people who are maybe a little uncomfortable or it's a situation or atmosphere where it's a little bit less intimate, such as your situation? I think I, I, I have to say I did use to blame the trainers. But actually, I went to these classes and didn't say, oh, I had a baby eight months ago because it was eight months ago and most of the time the trainer will say well yeah it was eight months ago what's the matter do you know what I mean do these sit-ups and planks and stuff so I think it is up to the individual that when you are signing that person's health form you are actually ticking that you are okay for exercise 
Now, if you went to that class with a bad, we've got to create, we've got to look at issues around our core and our pelvic floor, just like we would back pain or knee pain or shoulder pain. Because actually, would you go, and I'm going to just use CrossFit, um, would you go to a CrossFit class and tick you are okay for exercise if you had a slip disc in your back? Or this is brilliant. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I think that you either wouldn't go or you would tell the instructor beforehand. You'd probably email the instructor and say, is this okay for me to do? But as women, this bounce back, get back into fitness that we are all trying to, that apparently it's amazing if we go back into fitness within four weeks of having a baby and we just bounce back, we apparently are all clear then. So I think it is up to the individual to say to the instructor, I had a baby and I had a C-section and I had forceps or, or, or whatever, and I'm not quite right down there. And actually, a good fitness instructor would then refer and say, I don't think this class is for you. Here is, I think you need to do X, Y, Z. Okay. Um, now, is that going to happen? I don't know, because all the moms that come to me have all been to those classes um, and not told the instructors anything. So I also think that maybe, because these instructors aren't postnatal fitness trained, it's not their job. They might be military trained, so they probably don't want to do a postnatal fitness course. Um, so I think it might also be up to the, the fitness instructor just to to put a few pointers on that, you know, that um, if you do leak at any time or um, if your pelvic floor isn't quite strong or have you been checked for diastasis because these exercises aren't suitable? I don't know. Um, I tell my ladies that if they want to go to a new class, there's lots of um, really um, hardcore classes out in Brighton at the moment to actually go and and speak to the instructor or go and just watch the class and see what the class is about. Um, and that's what my clients do. And then they come back to me and say, oh, they were doing ropes and they were doing burpees, they were doing plants. And then I give them a modification for those. Yeah. So, um, and if, in, I, what, where I really want to be with, with my business is actually go to these instructors and help them with the modifications yeah. Do you know what I mean? yeah so every like you said in in yours and um and another and brianna says every exercise can be modified mm -hmm. and at the end of the day these women like these classes down the, uh, on the lawns we've got beautiful beach and bright and you've seen it um because it's it's at the time of day when they can do it um and mine might not be um and they like training outside and mine's inside and they like training in in big groups and they like that shouty instructor so for me it's about giving them the confidence to to say I'm going to modify this exercise and to but to understand that and this is a great one that I pinched from Brianna which is um, modification does not make you weaker it makes your body stronger yeah for and sure and I think really that yeah, I love that. And I think that a lot of um, what your goal is and my goal is as well, is we are trying to help women get some awareness of, first of all, where the heck their pelvic floor even is, where their deep core muscles even are. And then like, like we're saying, how to, how to modify any exercise or fitness program so that they actually don't need us anymore, so that exactly. they don't need our instruction, so that they can go away from your more focused classes, my more focused YouTube channel, and they can do whatever they want to do safely because yeah. they know how to, where their limits are and how to listen to their bodies. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I think it's also important to ask, I always ask these women why they are doing these particular classes. And a lot of the time, it seems that they are punishing their body mm -hmm. um, for eating too much chocolate. Oh, well, I like chocolate, so I do these classes. Or um, I'm trying to get rid of this and my C-section overhand, so I go running. And actually, sometimes you find out that they 
they don't even like those classes. So teaching them to modify those exercises then isn't my goal. Let's well, let what do you want to do? Um, you know, we shouldn't be exercising to get thinner. It, that's not how it how it works. You know that. So and it's an education in nu- nutrition as well. But but um, nobody seems to understand the core. Um, I was in the gym the other day and somebody was, comp- it was, it was a mother who was complaining of backache. And the first thing the instructor said is, oh, we need to do some core training and got her with a medicine ball, throwing it to him, doing sit-ups and then planks. And I was thinking that's not core training. The core starts with the breath, yeah. understanding the diaphragm um, and, you know, and then, and then an education. Um, yeah again there's no bad exercise it, the plank isn't a bad exercise it's it's why we're doing it and how we're doing it exactly the issue with everything I think yeah. yeah I love that I love that and to go back to your point about fitness yes I always say fitness should feel good it should be fun it's not punishment as you mentioned and I always encourage people to date every form of exercise until they find the one they love and then stick with that until you're done with it and want to move on to something else. There's seasons in our lives and sometimes you crave that more high intensity thing. And sometimes you, it's not working for you, even if you at one time did it and then maybe you'll go back to it. So it's just a very fluid thing. So yeah. And a lot of my moms are trying to do what they did in their twenties. Yeah. So they remember what they did in their late twenties. They got pregnant early thirties and then they've done nothing for seven years, which is nothing wrong with that. It's life. And I understand that. Um, And then they're like, well, this worked for me when I was 25. And I have to kind of re-educate them that they're now heading towards more perimenopause, menopause, which Jenny Burrell talks about a lot. And I signed up her course. Um, And, um, you know, so actually that hardcore hit training isn't for them anymore. Yes, they can do it. Um, but is that really what their body needs? Yeah. You know, so everyone always tells me what they used to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, I suppose I did as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's like what you used to do. I think we've all been guilty of it. So, well, yeah. let's. Um, let's bring this home with just again just kind of reiterating that again both Emma and I I think Emma is obviously an example of a fitness trainer that you would love to have if you have pelvic floor or core issues if you know you have them even if you're not sure you know I just think it's so important to well you're probably not still watching if you're not sure <laughs> you know, I think in general it's, it's a good idea for all women to go through these screening essentials when they are going to get back into fitness, if they're getting back in, especially after baby, and to think about the breathing strategies, to think about the diastasis recti, to think about their pelvic floor and re- being realistic about what's going on. Because if you are leaky, leaking a little bit when you cough or laugh, that's not, it's not... <laughs> It's normal, but it's, or it's typical, but it's not normal. So there's things that can be done about it. And I'm, I'm just thrilled that there are trainers out there like you, Emma, who are addressing this one-on-one with women and also online. So um, please bring us home with anything else you'd like to leave people with. I would like to actually leave people with that a lot of people are fine after they've had their baby. So it's, it's later it seems to be when the children become are a bit older maybe five or six years old and they the children are heavier so they've actually spent their life picking carrying pushing on the swing pulling them (laughs) lifting them and all the other objects around and then they start going back to fitness and they don't want to see somebody like me because they're not postnatal Yeah. yeah because their kids are a lot older um, and then they go back into hardcore exercise, which is very fashionable at the moment, um, because there's, there's, there, there kind of like isn't any in between. And they're le- leaking a little bit, but nothing bad, nothing bad. But most of the ladies that come to me with prolapse or prolapse symptoms are those exact moms. And they kind of like missed this rehabilitation period. Um, and they're like, well, I, my kids are older. I should, this shouldn't be happening. And I'm like, well, it's more likely to happen 
as you get older and particularly, you know, going through to the menopause. So if you're watching this and you don't knit, you've probably switched off, but um, don't think that you're all clear. Um, you are postnatal for life, but that doesn't mean that you're weak. It just means that we have to remember that our bodies have birthed one way or another, however they came out, um, children, and they change. Our systems have changed. And, and, and however old your children are, or, or you, it's not too late to kind of rehabilitate that body. Beautiful. Back, back yeah, to agreed. It's never too late. I, yeah, I, I just actually answered a question about that on one of my videos. Someone said, I'm, you know, in my 50s, late, late 50s, is it too late for me? And I said, no, never too late. So, yeah. so that's what I'd like to finish with. It's never too late. Yeah. Seek help and don't put up with symptoms. Beautiful. And don't be afraid to speak to your fitness trainer and tell them what's going on. So this yeah. is becoming a more open conversation, I think, in general. People are talking about this. They are. And we're still kind of on the cutting edge, I'd say. But I think it's becoming more of a thing that people are more aware of pelvic health issues and all that. So I think it's less, it's less, your fitness instructor will probably be less like, what are you talking about? That's disgusting. And they're, they're going to be more like, oh, I totally get it. Or, you know, again, refer that you to someone who knows in your area who can help you. They're going to be, they're going to be open. They're not going to say that's disgusting anyway, unless they're 15 years old and don't understand yet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We did, because we did. again, they've probably been there. <laughs> I did have one PT I overheard who was in her 20s and, and the mom said oh I don't think my pelvic floor will withstand that exercise it was a jumping exercise and she actually said what's the pelvic floor oh no <laughs> oh no but I'm I think you know if you are a, a postnatal fitness expert like myself then it's up to us to start going out to other fitness professionals and just you know educating them a little bit because once they've been to, once my clients have sort of spent 12 weeks or 16 weeks with me I want to be able to send them to um a class where I know that they won't feel uncomfortable modifying an exercise if they need to yeah. so yeah I'm going out there and getting to know fitness instructors in Brighton and Hove and I think that's really important I love that I love that yeah that yeah. cooperation that's yeah. great. Okay, yeah. wonderful, Emma. Well, thank you. So you are at superchargedclub.co.uk and yeah. I'll put that link. Um, anywhere else people can connect with you? Um, I've got a closed Facebook page um, where all my videos go out on. Um, so um, they can get that link um, through, the uh, through the website. Okay, wonderful. And also Instagram. Um, not quite there with Instagram yet. I'm getting there, but Instagram Supercharged Club. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. Wonderful. Well, right. let's go ahead and sign off. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you everyone for watching. And as always, I'm going to leave you with the reminder to eat clean, move every day, and you will shine brighter. Please subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Please say hi to Emma on social media and on our website if you enjoyed our conversation. And we'll see you all next time. Bye. Want to say goodbye, Bye. Emma? Bye. Bye.